Hi everyone, it's Rax. Path of Exile is considered one of the best ARPGs of all time. It has one problem that's pretty much universally known. The barrier to entry for new players is very, very high, which prevents a lot of people from playing. Some people have never played the game at all, or some people might have started it up a little bit here or there, but just got discouraged for whatever reason and quit. So people have been begging me to make a beginner's guide, and so here it finally is. I need to make a quick disclaimer, though. Keep in mind, this is really my first league I've been blasting for the last few weeks, and all the lovely people that have come into chat and have helped teach me. I feel like I've learned uh, like an entire encyclopedia in just a few weeks, and I've leveled up uh, of several characters into the end game. So I feel like I'm at least comfortable enough to make this video. But keep in mind, I am not a professional Path of Exile player. I am not a god at this game yet. Hopefully one day. Um, so after this video, I'll try to make other ones, but there are a ton of other godly content creators who have made similar videos along with more advanced guides. I'm not going to name them because if I do, I'm going to forget some people, but please go look around and check them all out because they've got some fantastic content as well. But what this video is going to be, if you've never played or you barely played and you quit and you hated it, I'm going to take the giant monstrosity that Path of Exile is and I'm going to cut out 99% of it. I'm going to take the last 1% and I'm going to simplify it as much as I possibly can so you can log in and dominate. Let's get started. All right. Before we start playing Path of Exile, there are three things that I think you absolutely must have as a brand new player in order to enjoy the game. Let's go over them. The first thing is I would strongly advise you to follow a guide. Now, of course, I'm part of Team Maxwell, so I'm going to show you the Maxwell guides, but I would be very dumb to say that Maxwell is the only place that has good guides. There's probably lots of them. There's lots of great content creators out there with amazing guides. But these are the guides that I know. These are the guides that I have followed. These are the guides that have worked for me. So that's what I'm going to show you. Maxwell.gg slash POE. You go to Build Guides and you go to League Starters. I am quite sure that any of these would be very good for you. But I'm going to talk to you about the three that I have played, and I'll make a recommendation to you. So let's start with the one that I started this league, Lightning Arrow Deadeye. So Lightning Arrow has the benefit of being the best mapper. It just runs through, and it eventually levels up into Tornado Shot. And you just run through the maps, and you just kill monsters five screens ahead of you, and you just feel like a god. There are two problems, though. The first issue is, is you have zero survivability. So you are going to die dozens, if not hundreds of times on this build, guaranteed. So if you get really upset when you die, this is not the build for you. The second thing is, is in the end game to build in a tornado shot, especially because it seems everyone and their mom is currently playing Lightning Arrow Deadeye, those quivers and those bows and everything that you need are going to be very expensive. It's one of the most expensive builds in the end game. If you like to play a lot, that's how you're going to be able to get the gear. But there's no denying the output of Lightning Arrow. It's a ranged bow class and you just delete everything. Um, it's absolutely amazing. This is what I played when I played Past Exile the only other time and I played it for a brief moment. I played Toxic Rain Ballista Pathfinder. Everyone kept telling me that the build is pretty mid and the build has been nerfed since then. But let me tell you, when I played Toxic Rain Pathfinder, I thought it was godly. I killed all four of the bosses. I killed Maven, Shaper, Elder, Searing Exarch. I think that's who they are. And I also cleared all the maps. And I was able to farm T16 easily. Here you lay down little totems, little ballistas, and they shoot down Toxic Rain that actually does chaos damage, which helps a lot for like Reflect, because a lot of the times I could play Reflect maps that nobody else could. It's very nice because you just lay your little ballistas and then you just run away. And if any, if any danger is there, you just run the other way. Your ballistas will take care of everything for you. Um, it felt amazing. People have said that EA Ballista, Explosive Arrow, is just a better version of Toxic Rain. That might be true, but I've never played it. So if you want to lay down little ballistas and win like that, this could be an excellent one for you or Explosive Arrow Ballista. So the other one that everyone is playing that I just made that people love is SRS Guardian, Summon Raging Spirit Guardian. And I have to be honest with you, 
if you want me to make a recommendation, this is the guide that you should do. And the reason why is the whole, the campaign is just trivial once you unlock this giant set. I call him Butter Boy. Once you unlock Butter Boy, this giant golden dude that follows you around, he just kills everything for you instantly. And then the raging spirits that you summon when you eventually pump it up, they do so much damage. And it's a minion build. You don't have to target anything. You just summon them and they will do all the work for you. And this is an amazing bosser. At least it's way better than my lightning arrow or tornado shot because it's very tanky. And again, you can just lay the minions and just run away. So if you don't know what to play and you want me to make a recommendation to you, I would play this Summon Raging Spirit League starter. And we'll dive into it a little bit more later. That's the first thing you need is a guide. And let me explain to you one more reason why. It's not like Diablo where you can be like, oh, I'm going to play a lightning sorcerer. So I'll pick sorcerer and in the talent trees, hmm, I'll pick some lightning stuff. Lightning, yeah, this sounds lightning-y. Oh, okay, my build kind of works. That's not going to work in this game. There are too many mechanics. There's too many complications for you to possibly make a good build on your very first try. You can try if you want, but if you want my advice, follow a guide for the very first time. The second thing that you need is a loot filter. You must have this. If you don't have this, you are going to hate the game, I guarantee you. Path of Exile drops so many items. If you don't filter through them from dropping, you're going to walk five steps, have a full inventory, and you're going to go back to town. Walk five steps, have a full inventory, and go back to town. You're not even going to be playing the game. So when you log on to the Path of Exile website, you go to Game, and then you go to Item Filters. And the loot filters here work very easily. The most famous one is Never Sinks. I use this one forever. So all you do is click on the loot filter and you hit follow and that's it. Once you hit follow, you can go into the game and you can select it via the game item filters and then uh, or escape options, game, and then item filter. That's what it is. And then you can select um, the filter that you want. Now, one thing that you can do is when you first start out, you just take the regular softcore version. And then when you get a little bit further and it's just dropping too much stuff and you're like, eh, I don't want that crap anymore, you can just select a different one. You can select the semi-strict one. And then you can pick the stricter one as you get further along. You get the idea, right? So as you get further, you can increase the severity of how much it's going to filter out. You must have a loot filter. If you don't have that, you're going to be big sad. Then the final thing is I would download Awakened PoE Trade. This will help you so much. We're going to get to that at the very end of the guide. But trust me, it's not going to really help you in the campaign much. But you need this. And console players, I don't think this works for you. So that's big sad. So I apologize. But for PC players, trust me. Get Awakened PoE Trade. You'll see at the end of the guide why. All right. We got our guide. Got our awakened PoE trade. We followed our loot filter. Time to play the game. Path of Exile, log in, and we're going to create a new character. Now, you don't have to do anything. It automatically picks the thing that you want. See how it highlights Affliction? Affliction is the current League mechanic. You want to choose that. You don't want to pick SSF for your first time. You don't want to pick Ruthless, and you don't want to pick Hardcore or anything like that. Let's go softcore for our first time. If you don't die on your first playthrough of Path of Exile, it's going to be a miracle. So everything should be good. So hit OK. And then we've got all of these different people that we got to pick. Now, the first thing that's going to confuse you is Max Roll Guide says SRS Guardian. But when I click on this and go through all of them, name of my shadow, the name of my marauder, none of them are named Guardian. That's because all the different classes level up and ascend into a different class. So there's a base class, which is what we must pick, then we'll ascend later. So there's a beautiful little guide right here of what ascends into what. And you will see that if you wanted to play SRS Guardian, you would need to start as a Templar. And then you will ascend when you get the choice into Guardian. And if you wanted to go Lightning Arrow Deadeye, you would pick Ranger. 
And if you wanted to go Toxic Rain Pathfinder, you would also pick Ranger. Okay, so that's the first point of confusion that will help you. So we're going Templar on the left if we are going to play um, SRS Guardian, name it, and log in. All right, with our brand new character, now we've got to set our options before we set out on our journey. So we go to options. You can mess around with any of them here, but let me show you a couple important ones. First of all, go to game, item filter, and then pick the loot filter that you followed. So you probably followed Never Sync's regular softcore filter. So you would click that and hit the refresh, and boom, there we go. Um, another super important thing on your minimap is go to landscape transparency and put it all the way down. Reason why is if you look at my minimap here, it's got these nice little lines showing me the outline of the terrain. If you put it, think it by default, it starts like this. And look at how confusing that is. I have no idea where to go anymore. So all the way down on the landscape transparency, and we have a beautiful little map. And another thing you can do for fun is you can mess with the mouse cursor. I made it pink and I made it large because in the end game, there's going to be a lot of crazy stuff um, that's going to uh, really mess with you. Another thing is you can change your attack. Uh, you can move stuff. You can select stuff as movement only. You can pick what your attack is. I actually move with my mouse five, so I'm going to go like that. So I force move. And here we go. We pick up our scepter. We talk to the Dying Exile, we use our attack, and it's going to drop us our very first gem. So here's the thing to understand. There are gems in this game that you socket into your gear, and then you're able to use them. So Glacial Hammer is an attack. It's melee, it's strike, it's cold. It's got the tags, the tags at the top. And that's going to explain to you like how it works later on when we get a little bit better at the game. The basic idea here is you want to take an attack and link it to other gems to make it more powerful. So the most powerful linking you can get in the game is a six link. That will be one of your goals starting Path of Exile is getting like a six linked body armor so you can absolutely dominate with your summon raging spirits or your tornado shot or whatever it is that you're playing. So obviously red sockets and red, blue sockets and blue, that makes sense. And what you will notice in the guide here is the guide is going to be explaining to you exactly what you're going to be looking for at all times. It's very easy to follow this guide if you go to the leveling tab. And by the way, you can see how good of how good of rankings the Summon Raging Spirit Guardian has. Difficulty, very easy. Budget, extremely low. Mapping, excellent. Bossing, good. God, the bosses that I did died instantly. Defense, excellent. So that's why this build is so good. It's good at everything. But anyway, you go to the leveling tab. And th right here, this little thing has just about everything you need to succeed. Look how easy this is. You start at level one. And it's telling you, well, you're hoping to get rolling magma, and you're hoping to find elemental proliferation and combustion and link them together. So if you find any item with blue, 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 then you're going to acquire these three gems, and you're going to get them very early on. And then you're going to use rolling magma, which is your spell, to crush everything. However, um, when I played this, um, I used the Holy Flame Totem with Summon Phantasm, and that dominated for me. I love, um, if you can't tell from me talking about Toxic Rain, I love just laying these totems and having them do all the work for me. I found Rolling Magma to be a little bit clunky, but people said it's the best option early game, and they're smarter than me, so I believe them. But anyway, the basic idea is, is it shows you what kind of links you're looking for. Okay, and these don't need to be linked to anything. And then as you level up a little bit, they'll change. They'll say, okay, oh, there's something that changed. You might want to change your spells a little bit. Okay, there's a change. And you just keep leveling up like this. And finally, you're looking for a four link. And now finally at this level, we're using Summon Raging Spirit. You'll find that's very common in many guides. For example, if you're playing Lightning Arrow, you might think that you will play Lightning Arrow from the beginning. But actually, they recommend playing 
Rain of Arrows for a very long time, and then switching to Lightning Arrow, because Rain of Arrows is so strong early game. Okay, so that's how the gems work. You're going to be finding different gems, and you're going to want to try to link them for more damage. Eventually, you end up with a six link. As you probably saw here, this is the passive tree for Path of Exile. It's a gigantic monstrosity, and sitting here trying to understand it and theory craft it is far beyond what a new player would be able to do. So you just follow it. Just follow it. And he's in Subtractum, who wrote the guide, shout out to Subtractum, is going to guide you through exactly what you need to do. Just follow it step by step by step. Easy as can be. Down here, it tells you when you're going to get all of the gems. In Act 1, in Act 1, in Act 1, in Act 1, Act 1, Act 1. You notice you get them all very, very early. Duh. Otherwise, it wouldn't help you. And then, here are some important tips and tricks for the build guide. And you might be like, oh my god, I don't want to read that. There's really not much text at all. This is all the tips and tricks for the entire campaign. So if you read this, it will teach you how to position stuff, what to do, look for this ring, do that, da-da-da-da-da. It's worth the read, trust me. I didn't read it my first time, and everyone told me, asked me why I didn't, and then I, I regretted it. So the leveling tab right here is going to have everything that you need. Okay, So let, let me just show you some basics here. So we socketed this gem, and now we have Glacial Hammer. And then when you walk forward here, I believe there's always a chest that's going to give you a support gem that's going to kind of teach you, hey, here's how you link something. There it is. Oh, you can't miss it. It's going to be somewhere. Boom. What a surprise. It links perfectly with what I have. And there we go. And then you just you can map this to whatever skill you like. Big swing, big swing, dead. Another option that you have that I need to mention with any attack, this is especially helpful for like the lightning arrow dead eye is you can select attack without moving always. So that means if you click it, it's always going to stop and swing. So you don't have to do that weird stutter stepping for standstill stuff in Diablo. You can actually select a skill to always attack if you click it, stop and do it no matter what, which is um, something pretty excellent, in my opinion. I wish Diablo had that. One more thing I want to talk to you about. It's a lot of talking, right? But one more thing flasks so there are a bunch of different kinds of flasks and these are going to as you probably guessed by the coloring these are going to recover your health and the mana flasks are going to recover your mana okay they're by default they're uh i think they're actually bound to one two three four five q w e r t is over here i think i switched it um but anyway there are also a bunch of other flasks you will encounter along the way i wouldn't worry too much about that you could probably get by by just going with life and mana flasks the entire time for your first playthrough. One very nice one while leveling is Quicksilver. Every time you press it, you run faster. It just helps you get from A to B. That's a, a favorite, especially amongst the speedrunners and people that have played a lot. Let me tell you the basic idea of how to think about flasks. So when you start to get different uh powers on them when you start to get magic flasks that actually do something besides just you know restore your health the idea is to get different uh powers or affixes on them that will help you for example i might find a flask that says this grants you immunity to being frozen fine then when i'm looking for another life flask i would like it to have a different power it might be immunity to bleeding or it might be immunity to corrupted blood, something like that. That is something to keep in mind for your first playthrough. Try to get different flasks that give you different buffs. Um, and you might be wondering, well, when I use a flask, how do I get the charges back? You get the charges back by killing monsters. So if you're fighting a boss, and you're like running low on your flasks, and you're panicking, one of the best things you can do is, Continue to hit the boss to hopefully you phase him so he summons some adds. When you kill the adds, you're going to get more flash charges. And you get the idea. One final thing I want to tell you. Right off the bat, you might be like, oh my god, I got to use all of my skills over here. And then I have all my flasks over here that I have to, I'm essentially playing piano tiles over here while I'm playing a game over here. 
this is already too complicated and it's not for me. Well, I have fantastic news for you. In the end game, you can actually craft your flask to auto cast. You can craft, for example, cast when charges are full. And so the moment that you get full charges, it'll just cast it for you. It doesn't work on every flask like health and mana. Grinding Gear Games wants you to actually use those intelligently. But for all the other ones, like the evasion or the extra armor or the movement speed, you can have those just auto cast. So actually, as this zombie is going to try to kill me, nice try. Um, so that actually gets solved in the end game. So if you're worried about that in the early game, you can fix it later on. All right, we got our character created. We've got our guide. We got our loot filter. Let's talk strategy in the campaign. Let's talk some very basic hints that I think are going to help you. So if you watch a speedrunner play Path of Exile, they're going to just blast through the game. They're going to skip everything. They're only going to do very, very specific quests here and there. Farm XP at these perfect points. They know all the layouts. This is not us, right? We're brand new players. It is perfectly fine to just kill the monsters that you see. Um, it's, a, I think, a good idea for your very first playthrough to do every single quest. Yes, I can make a checklist. Yeah, do this quest, that quest. Oh, yeah, you can skip this one. Do these five and these four. No, no, don't do that one. Don't go to that zone. That's confusing. And it, it's not fun. Just play the game. You can do all the quests. So here's what I do. Go through Act 1 and just play, play, play. Ha, ha. Your quests, your quests will show up here. And then when you get to the very end, then you can look at these little boxes on the ground and see if there are any quests left. For example. All these quests are done because they're grayed out, but a dirty job, it's telling me I have a quest over here. So if I ported to the coast, this little blue dot indicates that I've gotten the waypoint. If I port here, I run a little bit northeast, and then I run northwest from there, I should be in the right zone to complete this quest. If I were you, I would just do all of them. When you finish the campaign, you can double check your work. You can do slash passives. And make sure that the number to the left of all of these quests is not zero. Make sure that you got all of your passive points and you'll know that you did all of the critical quests. The next thing that you're going to see is in the early game, Grinding Gear Games is not going to give you very many portal scrolls or scrolls of wisdom. You're probably going to find way more items than you have scrolls for. So you're going, to be, you're going to be very frustrated and you're going to be like, how in the world am I supposed to identify all this different stuff? Um, I, I don't even know what to do with this gear. There's a million little vendor trick recipes, but one of them that you should know from the very beginning is if you vendor an orb of alteration, it'll give you four scrolls of wisdom. Do that, four scrolls, boom, and then you just like good old Diablo two days, you right click it and you identify it. And look, we, it's a good thing that we sold that because we just got the greatest stuff ever found in Path of Exile history. In the event that you don't have an alteration and you don't have any scrolls of wisdom, don't overthink it. Just go to the vendor and just sell it all. Sell it all. It's going to give you a bunch of little itty-bitty currency. It's fine. Go forward. Keep killing. If you kill everything, you will be very overleveled. If you do all the quests... Once again, you'll be overleveled. You have some extra bonus items. You'll get all the passive points. Everything will be feeling very, very comfortable. So one more trick that I want to show you is let's say you're out uh, doing a quest here. Okay, let's say I'm over here and I'm going this way. Okay, I'm killing, I'm killing. I got to kill uh, the great white shark. Okay, uh, there's the great white shark. I killed him. I want to go back to town now. But... Grinding Gear Games is not being very generous. You don't have a way to go back to town. Well, one way is keep, keep pressing forward and look for the next waypoint. But if you got to go back to town right now, you can actually just hit Escape, go to Character Selection, and just re-log into your character. And boom, free scroll of town portal. Here I am. You won't have a way to get back exactly where you were. Well, you can just go down here to the waypoint and then pick up where you left off and keep going. That's another huge hint. When you don't have portal scrolls, just log out and you'll start in town. Uh, so that's, th that's about it for the strategy. Feel free to do everything. And now let's hit on some key points in the campaign that you must pay attention to.
All right, let's talk about one of the most important things in the game, your hideout. This is where you're going to, this is your nice, warm, comfy, safe place that you're going to be using uh, for 99% of your Path of Exile journey. So when you beat Act 2, you're going to get a quest to go to your hideout, and you're going to do some very basic things with it. I think you're going to get your crafting bench. It's one of the very first steps. This crafting bench is absolutely godly for you. Your hideout is not going to look like this because I have an amazing, beautiful hideout that I got from hideoutshowcase.com. Go here for most popular layout with no microtransactions, for example, and then you can download them here if you want a beautiful hideout. Or maybe you're, a, or you're an amazing designer and you can make it yourself and make it amazing. But in the very beginning, it's going to look like a pretty dull room. Um, with uh, nothing in it. And there's little hideouts that you can unlock as you're going through the campaign. So um, when you get here to the crafting bench, this thing is going to carry you. Now, there's so many things and so many amazing tricks with the crafting bench, but like I said, I'm gonna get rid of 99% of everything and learn the most basic stuff. In every single item, there are an amount of prefixes and suffixes that you can have on it. Usually three prefixes and three suffixes. I don't know if there's the possibility to have more, I'm sure. There's always crazy things in Path of Exile. Um, but anyway, when you're leveling up through the game, there's two things that you want to focus on on just about every single character. Life and your resistances. So when you're playing through the game, you want your resistances, not chaos, when you, go to, when you press C and you go to defense, you want your fire, cold, and lightning to be 75 or even a little bit higher. There's nothing wrong with that the entire time. So when you pick up some loot or whatever and you've got some currency beyond Act 2, you might be wondering, hmm, how can I get a little bit stronger? Click on the waypoint anywhere, and at the bottom, you click go to your hideout. So here I am. And then you go to wherever you place your crafting bench. And then you throw something in there. Now, if you have an open prefix, it'll give you the choices that you can put on your gloves. But maybe your prefixes are full, and then maybe you can craft a suffix. Prefix is life, suffixes are resistances. This is almost always what you want to craft on your gear while you're leveling up. Um, and another thing is you'll notice as you're running along through the campaign, there's little crafting recipes that you can click on to unlock them for your bench. Make sure that you click them. Sometimes you'll see them on bosses or when you do the Trials of Ascendancy, which is going to be the next point. Um, but it's a very good idea to come on here and craft life or resistances on everything. And there's, since there's different levels of all the different uh, recipes, you can always just craft the little baby ones. You won't have very much currency. For the campaign, I have never found that you need anything more than the bare minimum. But for example, crafting, and by the way, there's a beautiful search bar here. If you just craft you know, the, the bottom tier 20 fire res, that's going to make a huge difference for you if you're missing it. So make sure you pay attention when you log, when you uh, unlock your hideout. Make sure that you understand that at any waypoint, you can just click, go to your hideout like that. If, I think if you download Awaken PoE Trade, you can also just press F5 to go to your hideout immediately as well. I think you can also type slash hideout, I believe. Um, and go to your crafting bench. Life and resistances are absolutely your friend in Path of Exile. There was one more thing in the campaign that is absolutely critical to understand and do as you move along and complete as quickly as you can, and that is the Trials of Ascendancy, so you can ascend into your final form. Remember how in the beginning we said Rangers can level up into either Deadeye or Pathfinder, and how the Templars can level up into a Guardian? This is how you're going to do it. So in certain uh, areas, you're going to say complete the trial of ascendancy. And essentially, it's just going to lay a bunch of traps for you and see if you can figure out the little puzzle to get through it. Remember, we're playing softcore here, so it doesn't really matter. Even when I'm playing a baby character, I always just find that just YOLOing through it as fast as you possibly can works pretty much every time. 
So if you just rampage through it here and just go as fast as you can, you should be able to win quite easily. When you get to the end of it, it's going to say, hooray, you did it. And there's going to be six of them in the beginning. Then there's going to be three more to do the next level. And then three more to do the final level in the campaign. So what's going to happen is when you get to act three, oh, I don't have a, I don't have a portal scroll, so I could either escape or we could press F5 or slash hideout. Can't do that from here. That's a wham. Okay, so we go escape, log out. We're going to use the trick in the guide. Boom. Incredible. So when you get to act three, oh, perfect. It put me here. There's going to be a little board right here that's going to highlight green to show you which of them you've completed of the six in order to try the little labyrinth to win. So if you're missing any of them, you could mouse over this little circle and it would tell you which one you're missing, but I've done them all. I actually don't know why that one isn't highlighted, maybe because this is my alt. And what you're going to do is you're going to go in here and start the beginner labyrinth that re recommends level 33, and you're going to try to go through it. There's going to be a bunch of little puzzles there for you to solve, and you're going to have to fight the same boss three times. When you kill him, you're going to be able to get a bunch of rewards, open some chests, you're going to be able to level up a gem or do stuff like that. Um, but you're finally going to be able to pick your ascendancy points. So this should look familiar. If you're going to play SRS Garden, you can see I literally copied the same build guide and I absolutely dominated the game with him. But this is uh, the funniest thing ever. When you complete, every time you complete one of these labs, there's four of them, three in the campaign, and then one later on, you get two points to put in to your ascendancy. So you would pick your ascending to a guardian, and then you get this little skill, Radiant Crusade. Grants level 20 Summon Sentinel of Radiance. The, the proper name for this is Butter Boy. Now you get to summon Butter Boy and he obliterates the entire game for you and you can AFK the rest of the time. So just to give you an example, like obviously I'm, I'm too powerful for this tier, but let me just summon Butter Boy and do absolutely nothing but walk forward. And I just want to show you how powerful he is. This is what your leveling is going to be like for SRS Guardian once you beat the first lab at level 33. Okay, Butter Boy, there he is. Okay, and you just walk. There is a, there is a skill that you will have that will recall him for you. Okay, it's way easier when you have the recall. And he burns everyone alive and kills them instantly. I'm not, I'm supposed to be playing Summon Raging Spirit. You don't even need it. This guy just walks forward and he tanks for you and he, he gives you damage reduction and he burns everybody alive and the burn is screen wide. This is what you get to look forward to the first time you beat the first lab. You're going to get Butter Boy and he's going to carry you. One massive hint, and I messed this up on my second character, don't do this. When you get to the third lab, you're going to get to the third lab about at the end of the campaign when you fight the final boss. Make sure that you complete the lab before you kill the final boss. The reason why is when you kill the final boss, he lowers all of your resistances for the end game to get you ready for maps to you know make the game more challenging for you. So if you kill him first, then you have to do the, the third lab with way less resistances. It just makes it way harder. So make sure that you do the third lab before you kill the final boss. But once you get Butter Boy with SRS Guardian, once you get this guy and you resummon him, whatever, every 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it is, and there's going to be a skill that you take that will let you teleport him to wherever you are. You just dash forward, boom, 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 and then you just resummon him. Oh, oh, and everybody's dead. That's how powerful it is. Make sure that you do the labs in the campaign. And one more thing, just in case you're having difficulty with the labs, you probably already guessed, Maxwell has an entire guide on the labs. It'll tell you exactly where all the trials are and explain where they are on the maps, da 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 da. It will explain all the different traps. So if you, if you wanna read further, if you really want help and you can't get through the lab, this will help you. Another thing is, if the first lab says required level 33, you go at 33 and you just get destroyed, that's okay. Go try 
go level up in Act 4, keep leveling up a little bit, go back when you're 35, go back when you're 40, that's fine. But make sure you get it done as early as your character is able to, because it has massive rewards. All right, we did it. We learned about skills and flasks. We learned about the labs. We learned about the hideout and the crafting bench. We love the crafting bench for the, la- for the life and the resistances. And we got our ascendancies and Butter Boy carried us through and we dominated. And now we're finally in the end game and we're ready for the fun part. Let's talk about a topic that's unfun though. Is that even a word? Unfun? We're going to go escape options, microtransaction shop. Remember, Path of Exile is a free game. And if you ask me, Grinding Gear Games is allowed to make money on their game. If everything was just free, then they would shut down and we wouldn't have a game to play. So this supports them. So we are going to go to the Stash tab tab. And I think you've got to buy three things to enjoy the game. A lot of these will really help you. But I think there's three of them that you should really consider purchasing if you made it this far and you're still enjoying the game. The first thing that I would buy is the currency stash tab. You're going to be finding so many currencies. If you don't have a tab to keep them all organized, your brain will explode. Speaking of brain exploding, your brain will explode if you don't have the map stash tab. If you're enjoying the game, you're going to be getting so many maps. If you don't have this to organize them beautifully for you, it's just not going to be fun. The other thing that I would buy is a premium quad stash tab. What a premium tab means is you can trade from it. And trading is a huge part of Path of Exile. And trading is actually a great way to learn a lot about the game, about the different values. It's also an amazing way to help enable you with different farming strategies. So if you don't have a way to trade, it's going to be very rough. Yes, you could pay far, far less to just upgrade a tab to a premium tab, but these tabs are much smaller. Having one gigantic one to trade out of should be enough. And I believe 10 points is a dollar. So if my math is right, the total here is $37.50, but there's no stash tab sales going on. Sometimes they have sales, and actually it's almost Christmas, so maybe there will be some. I would buy currency, map, and premium quad. That would be my recommendation for you if you would like to enjoy the game. Let me show you what they look like real quick. So if I click on my map tab, as we're going to explain how the maps work, this is all the different levels of them and all the different ones, and it organizes them beautifully for you. The currency puts all of your currencies normal and exotic perfectly here and just stacks them all up. And by the way, if you're about to say that I'm poor, I just bought five doctor cards. Okay, maybe I am still poor, but whatever. And then uh, what does a premium quad tab look like? It looks like this. Look at how much space we have to sell so much different stuff. This should be good for you in order to play the end game. So if you've gotten this far, I would highly encourage you to buy these because without those tabs, it's going to be pretty rough. All right, now it's time to talk about mapping. And you could probably make a 67-week video on just mapping, but this is the beginner guide for beginners. So again, as promised, I'm going to try to cut out 99% of it. Mapping, this endgame, I think is one of the best endgames ever released in an ARPG, maybe the best end game. There's just so much to do here and so much to discover. So uh, let's go over the basic concept of the mapping system. So there are maps from T1 all the way to T16. There's actually also T17, and maybe there's other, there's other crazy ones. But this is the map of the 115 different maps. You can think of it like Pokemon. You want to catch them all. You want to have it say 115 of 115, just like it does for me. Now, once you achieve a certain milestone, all of them turn to level 16 maps, so you can run whatever one you want. But that's not how it goes in the beginning. Usually it's like level 1s, then 2s, 3s, 4s, and it just spreads out, right? So you want to run all of the different maps and get the credit for it, because every time you do that, If it wasn't enough to have one giant passive tree that you don't understand that you're following a guide for, how about another one? Mm, Another tree. Brain exploded. However, this tree, in my opinion, is much easier to explain than the other one. What this tree is, is it's allowing you to go through all of the different league mechanics 
that Path of Exile has released over the years and has included in the game going forward. And it lets you choose one or two of them that you really love to do, and you can buff them tremendously, and you can actually block all of the other ones so you can only focus on one or two things that you love doing. It's, it's a great system. So if we zoom in here, a bunch of the mechanics have different names, and I could sit here and try to explain them all to you, but that's where the head explosion comes in. We're going to skip that, but there is a mechanic called Breach. I just block Breach. Your maps have no breaches, 2% chance to have something else. Okay? Uh, Abysses? Nope. Gone. Oh, Expedition? I did Expedition on my Toxic Rain. I loved Expedition, by the way. Gone. Oh, uh, Sacred Grove, which I believe is Harvest, gone. Uh, Ritual, gone. Uh, Blight, gone. Uh, Ultimatum, gone. Uh, con Rogue Markers, Contracts, Blueprints, gone. I blocked them all because I'm doing Legion. Legion is a simple concept. Kill all the monsters once and then kill them again. That's what I'm doing on Lightning Arrow. It, Lightning Arrow and Tornado Shot are godly for Legion because Legion spawns a giant mass of monsters that you have to kill twice in a huge radius. That's what, that's what Tornado Shot's good at. But SRS Guardian, what you might be playing, that's not what it's good at. It's good at very methodical gameplay, like Sanctum, for example. And people are saying that it's uh, turning out to be a very good bosser as well. So the basic idea is, is you're completing the maps in order to get points to spec into this tree. And eventually what you will do is you will block all the stuff that you don't like once you've tried it all. And then you will heavily invest in the stuff that you do like. And you'll run that over and over to make your currency. Then you will trade stuff, make some money, and then buy the big ticket items that you really like. All right? Um, so there is one thing to understand about completing the maps. So, they're level 1 to 16. If we go to the map tab, notice how 1 through 5 are colored white, and they're also white on the picture. Whenever you complete a white map, it will only count if the rarity is blue or higher. So, for example, if I have this core map, it's a white map, you can tell it's white because... The, the symbol is white, and also because it's level 2. If I just plug this in my map device, and I run it, I will not get credit for it, because it's not at least a blue map. So, you go to your little currency tab, you put your map in here, and this is where some of this little baby currency that you've been picking up through the campaign, you're going to use it. So this the orb of transmutation says it makes a normal item a magic item. Oops. And then we just use it on the map. Boom. And now it's blue. And now we can run it. Beware, though, it's going to give the monster some powers and it's going to give you some better items. But sometimes it's going to give you a terrible affix that you cannot run. It might be reflex damage back at you. And that might one-shot you. In that case, not I wouldn't do this for the low-level maps, but for the higher-tier maps, you can scour it which just says removes all modifiers, brings it back to a white tier, and then you can just try it again. Ugh, the fact that my thing is public is annoying me because it's trying to sell my stuff instead of use it. Okay, and then, oh, this one looks pretty easy, then we could run that. Okay, so one through five, they've got to be at least blue. They could also be yellow as well. From six to ten, you need to make them yellow for them to count. So if I get, so all those work, if I get this one, Bog, level 7, you see how the symbol is yellow? Now I know it's got to be yellow for, it to be, for me to get credit. Go back to your Currency tab, throw it in, and this time we're going to use Orbs of Alchemy. Uh, take out an Orb of Alchemy, here we go, and make it yellow. Check to make sure it doesn't have the nasty reflect that you can't run. Perfect, I can run this one. Now we will get credit for it. And then finally, for the last here, the red ones, you got to do something even further. You got to go even further beyond Goku style. First, you have to make it yellow. 
Okay, that, that looks nasty. And then you have to corrupt it. Corruption is topic for another day, but you need to know this if you get this far. So you got to use a val orb and you have to corrupt it. When you corrupt something, you never know what's going to happen. Nothing could happen. It could completely change all the modifiers. It could uh, change it to a completely different map. Yeah, I don't know. Boom. Okay, it looks like it changed all the modifiers and it put monster reflect damage. Rip. You can't scour a corrupted item, so I can't, uh, I can't use that trick anymore. So now this map is pretty much bricked if I can't run the monsters reflect 18% of physical damage. So it gets a little harder to get the completion for the other maps. Not to mention the maps themselves are naturally harder and usually have much more deadly affixes. But if you're playing SRS Guardian, I think you'll be just fine. Butter Boy will, will help you with the little uh, um, summon raging spirits. I think you'll be fine. You'll be nice and tanky. Not going to be the fastest mapper, but you'll be fine. Lightning Arrow, you will die 974 times, but you will probably eventually win. But yeah, all you do is punch the maps into this device, and then it opens six portals, so you got six tries, and you just try to get to the end and kill the boss. That's all it is. It's pretty simple. So, but you must understand, one more time, just for reinforcement, one through five, they've got to be blue. You can use an orb of transmutation. You don't have to remember. I mean, you can just read what the currency does. This is just the basic currency right here. Um, for... Uh, 6 through 10, it's got to be used an alchemy orb. And then from all the way up, from uh, 11 to 16, you need to alk it. And then you need to use a val orb and just send it and pray that the corruption keeps the map that you originally had, arachnid nest, and hopefully you don't get uh, the reflect on there. You can just hold control and left click to put everything back into your stash. By the way, one thing I absolutely need to point out to you is when you buy these tabs, you should set their affinities. You right click on it and you put the affinity as currency. That means when you control left click into your stash, if it recognizes it as a currency, it will auto fill it in for you. If you don't pick that, it's just going to vomit it into a tab randomly. So, when you get your currency, set the affinity to currency if you buy that tab. And when you buy the map tab, right click it, set the affinity to the map thing. I'm so glad I remember that. I would have been very upset if I forgot to tell you that. There are two more things I want to show you, and then we can finally wrap up this video. Man, I, so I was going to cut out 99% of the stuff, but I feel like this video is getting too long and people are going to be sad. So, what you may be wondering is wait a minute, Rax, you forgot something. What am I supposed to do? What currency farming strategy am I supposed to use? Here are the different ones that you can do as a starter. And here's what you can use in the end game. I'm doing Legion. I absolutely love it. I've done Expedition as well. I don't know where Expedition is, but I absolutely love that one as well. But the one I would recommend for you is League Start, Alk, and Go. So uh, Grimro, by the way, shout out to Grimro. He's Probably one of the best currency farmers ever in Path of Exile's history. Um, it's super easy. It's, it requires you to invest literally nothing, and it requires you to manage nothing. So essentially, all you do is what I already described to you. What you do is you use an alchemy orb on your maps, and then you just go clear it. And that's pretty much it. And uh, there's a nice little setup here with a tree if you click the little cross in the top right. Here we'll show you how to path through it. It'll use the arrows at the top. It's going to show you like uh, some key nodes like shaping the skies and shaping the mountains and how to path through. And it essentially is just going to make your maps better. Instead of doing that more advanced strategy of block this, block that, block this, go really ham into this, that, this is just buffing your maps. Nice and easy. So you'll probably see a lot of different league mechanics as you do this going through your maps. And uh, you'll be able to pick up on some of the things that you may and may not like. I'll give you a warning. Whenever you do any league mechanic, 
the the blight tower defense uh the delirium mirror which i call gray peacock it's just a giant gray peacock um whether you try uh, sanctum or when you you know ultimatum whatever you try it's probably not going to go very well and you're probably going to be confused and that's okay don't let that discourage you you're supposed to be confused just kind of mess around with it and just see, oh, I kind of like fighting in the gladiator arena. Oh, I really like picking the flowers and harvest. Oh, I really like uh, the legion thing, killing all the enemies and then killing them all again. Ha ha, I, I killed you twice. Ha ha, you know, whatever. Um, then after you use this basic strategy, then you could go into one of the end game strategies. They're all listed here and they'll teach you exactly how to do it in the best way. And then you can make a million dollars. One final thing that I want to tell you, which I hope will make you feel a million times better about the game. Maybe I should have put it earlier in the video. You don't really have to know everything's value, everything's worth, how everything works in order to make a profit in this game. And how do you do that? It's with that very first thing that we started off with at the beginning of the video, the awakened PoE trade. So I have this turned on right now. So let's say uh, oh, I run a map and uh, I don't know, I get, um, I get uh, this, 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 uh, uh, and this, and this. Okay, Th that, that, those are the items that I found. All you have to do is hold control and press D. And it's going to tell you how, val how valuable it is. So if you look at the bottom, it says, I'm holding control, by the way, to mouse over. Mouse over here, hold control, press D, continue to hold control. You have 10 of these, they're worth 15 chaos orbs. Chaos orb, for lack of a better word, is like finding a $1 bill on the ground. It's the basic currency of Path of Exile. And then a divine orb right now is like finding two $100 bills. It's like 200 chaos for a divine right now, roughly. At the top left, you can see it's actually 190 for a divine. Anyway, this will give you the most rough estimate of what it's worth. You got 10 of those, and it's worth about 15 chaos. So then, remember the premium tab that you had? You could go throw it in there. This isn't a premium one. Here's a giant premium one. And I could say, right-click it, and I say, the exact price, I want you to pay me 15 chaos orbs divided by 10 of them. The first is the currency that you are willing to pay, or they're going to pay you, and then the 10 is how many you have. 15 for 10, fair trade. Then you just go play. Then people will whisper you, I would like to buy this. They come to your hideout. You initiate the trade with them. You right-click their portrait. You trade it to them. They give you 15 chaos. Let's try another one. Impale support. You want to... Do you think that I know how much a level one with 18 quality impale support is worth? I got no clue. I'll be honest with you. I don't even know what impale support does. If someone gave me a million, I don't know, it impales stuff, supports an, an attack and impales, I don't know. doesn't matter. Control D. It's worth five chaos, six chaos, and you can look at how long they listed it. A trick. If you get something very valuable, sometimes people try to trick you, and they will put, they will put like 10 copies of it for very, very cheap, but it's actually a super expensive item because they're banking on you looking at the top looking at the top uh, listings, just undercutting them by one, and then they'll buy it instantly, and you just lost a ton of money. One way you can tell that is if it was uploaded 10 days ago, well, they had no intention of ever selling it because uh, no one had ever bought it, even though it's the cheapest one. So maybe they're trying to price fix it. You can also click on the trade site and go to the trade site. This is something you should get familiar with as well. And you might say, Oh, okay, but what if I leveled it all the way to 20 and I got it to the maximum quality? What if I got it to 20 quality and then, sorry, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> the gem level was 20, search. Now it's worth 27. And you can do the math and be like, well, do I want to use the currency to make it 20 and spend the time to level it to level 20? Maybe you do or maybe you don't. The answer is you don't, but that's the idea. You can also use the pathofexile.com slash trade to buy things. For example, like the best uh, belt in the game is Headhunter. So you say, okay, I want a Headhunter. How much is it? 
Oh, 190 divines. This is where you realize you will never be able to afford a headhunter, and that's when you shut off Path of Exile and you go play Mario Kart instead. Just kidding. We don't act that way. We're going to farm 190 divine orbs and we're going to buy the headhunter. If you don't want a specific unique, you could be like, okay, hey, I'm just starting my SRS character and I'm dying a lot. So can I just get, um, uh, you can type here, can I get a pair of boots and let's see, type a, the tilde to the left of the one, uh, tilde, by the way, not squiggly. Okay, squiggly, that's fine. And type in life. I want to say, okay, I want boots with uh, 80 life and uh, I would like elemental resistances because my resistances suck. They're not capped. So I would like boots with at least uh, 70 resistances. And uh, I'm sick of moving slow. So movement speed, uh, I want them to be a 30%. Search. It's going to have the cheapest one. For three chaos, you can have an 88 life, 42 dual res, and 30% move speed boots for three chaos orbs. Okay. You click the whisper. It will whisper them. They're going to invite you. You click in the top left, go to their hideout. With, the, with three chaos orbs, trade it to them, you get your boots. Now you can live, okay? You can look at the trade site, that's how it works. But I wanted to include those two things. Use the ALK and go League Starter. It helps you with maps. And be aware of the trading thing. With the Awaken PoE trade, you can price anything with Control D. Let me show you one more thing. Okay, sorry. This is maybe a little bit more of an advanced thing, uh, but I want to show this to you. Okay, here, for example. Sometimes you will, your loot filter will show you uh, a special item. Let me, go to, uh, let me go to a different area so you can see it. And do you see how that's, it's weird? It's like green. It's got weird coloring to it. What this is, is it's a fractured item. Now this, you got to check it a different way. Fractured item just has like this guaranteed stat that's going to be there forever and 89 life is very juicy if you hold alt you can see it's tier two tier one is the best so it almost it has the maximum roll of the second best tier okay so how would i price this my same thing as always control d okay now this this is confusing it's looking at all the stats on it this is confusing I, but for a fractured item click base item base item I want to know how expensive is this base item because people will craft on it. That will give me an accurate estimation of what it's worth. This guy's posting it for five. That's, that's you, you see, it's like stupid, like not worth five, but I could probably get 20, 25, 30 chaos for it. Okay. Another trick. That way, when you see this, you're like, what's this weird thing? I don't know. It's a fractured mod. Control D, look at the base item. It's that 89 life that makes it valuable. General rule of thumb, if you hold alt on a fractured item and it's not T3 or better, it's usually dog shit. Little hint. This is getting too advanced. This is the beginner video and somehow we're talking about fractured items. There's a lot of things I can teach you, but not in this video. So uh, let's, let's wrap it up here. Real quick summary here. Um, when you're going to play PoE, it's a free game, make sure you have a guide. Make sure you have a loot filter. Make sure you have Awaken PoE trade. We looked at how to create a character and put it on the Affliction League so you can actually do the league mechanic. We didn't even talk about the league mechanic, but you go down in a hole and you collect Wisp and it makes your map way harder for higher rewards. That's There we go. There's the explanation there. Um, the skill gems are going to link together in your gear. Remember, you don't have to... Don't, don't try to theory craft that. Don't try to theory craft your atlas tree either. Your atlas tree either. You won't be able to. Use the guide for your first build. Then you can start theory crafting later. Make sure that you know the little tricks. If you run out of wisdoms, sell the orbs. Get the wisdoms. If you run out of portal scrolls, remember, you can just escape and log out and log right back in. You'll be back in town. Make sure you get your hideout, your crafting bench. Life and resistances are your friend. Make sure that you do your trials and make sure that you do the lab. You get Butterboy. It's over. You won. Summon Butterboy. Run forward. Read the guide. It will explain it. You win. Um, in the end game, the map device, it's Pokemon to get your points. One through five, 
blue. 6 through 10, yellow. 11 through 16, yellow, and then corrupted. Um, and then use the Alcango League Starter from Maxroll. It's going to buff your maps. Take a look at the different mechanics. Try to sort of learn them. You will be confused. That's normal. Don't get overwhelmed when you're confused. Microtransactions. Premium quad tab, map tab, currency tab. Set the affinities. Right-click, set the affinities. You don't need to know what anything's worth. Awaken POE trade. Control D, and it will roughly tell you how to use it. Use the POE trade site to search for some cheap gear, especially a couple of weeks into the season. It's going to be very cheap. And if you see weird stuff, fractured items, search for the base item. And don't let people trick you. Don't If you see the cop tuple, cop, top couple of items, man, I can't even speak anymore, that are way too low, then you know that someone's probably trying to trick you. And then just have fun with it. Um, I do have one question before I sign off here. I would really appreciate your honest feedback to this video. If you have time, throw me a comment. I will read them. What did you think? Did this help you at all? Did this uh, help explain the game? Does this make you want to try the game? Does it make you not want to try the game? Does it seem overwhelming? Um, I will read your feedback if you have it for me, and we'll see if I should be making more guides on this game or not. But I hope that you found this digestible and not overwhelming and uh, gives you the motivation to log in and give Path of Exile a try. If you have a lot of time on your hands and you like to really invest into a game, I think this is going to be very rewarding for you. Thank you.